Good day, viewers. Welcome to yet another episode of Speaking Plainly with Tabo Makwea. Today we have as our guest of honor the outgoing Premier of the Northern Cape Provincial Legislature, Premier Selvia Lucas. Good morning and welcome, uh, Solomon Star viewers. We are very excited to have with us today our Honorable Premier Selvia Lucas with whom I also had the opportunity of serving the, in the Northern Cape Legislature. Uh, and we are going to have a few firsts today. It is our first interview with a female guest. It is also our first uh, interview with uh, one, I, uh, someone as high up as you are in government. And we are going to allow you, Premier, to be free and we'll also speak Afrikaans because the Northern Cape is predominantly African speaking. Uh, it is an honor for us to have you with us, Premier. And again, once more, thank you for taking time off to be with us. Uh, Premier, a lot of people only know the name Sylvia Lucas and what they have seen on TV and what they read in newspapers. Can the Premier please share with us who Sylvia Lucas really is? Thank you, and thank you for with your initiative and Solomon Star, your current and also online platform. It's actually so the type initiative initiatieven wat de mens nogal nodig het in in die huidige dispensatie. Jy jy wil graag jy sê ek moet vir die mense sê wie Sylvia Lucas. Nou baie mense het verskillende eh uh, indrukke van wie dit is. Natuurlik dit hang af op wat er platforme en op wat er gebied jy met die mens skakel en so in. So jy sal mense kry wat sê sy is baie hardkoppig. Sy is daai uitgesproke. Is a mense kry my kerk mense sal vir jou sê suster Sylvie is baie goed vir ons en sy is altyd op die voorgrond om te help as daar dinge is waarmee daar moet gehelp word my kinders sal sê sy is 'n baie streng ma maar ons is baie lief vir haar want sy is altyd daar wanneer ons iets nodig het en sy is altyd daar vir ons my klein kinders sal sê sy is iemand wat wat sy wat sy sê geel en sê maar sy is baie liefdevol en ons kan enig iets meer vra ons kan enige tyd met haar uh, met haar uh, gesels oor enige ding hulle sal vir jou so sê ek weet nie of die gerees van die gemeenskap so voel nie maar ek moet sê ek is ek is 'n baie maklike persoon maar ek is iemand wat nie toelaat laat mense op my trap nie en ek dink sommige kere is dit seker dit wat beste mense onthou en mense probeer ons maar kanse vat met iemand vir alles jy in 'n posisie is soos wat ek myself bevind. Ek is vir die afgelope uh, 24 jaar as ek in polit in in openbare uh, kantoor in openbare posisies. Ek het net in 95 het ek in het ek 'n raadslid as 'n raadslid begin by Appington Munisipaliteit of Appington Raad en uh, ek is 2000 het ek begin as 'n as 'n lid van die van die provinsiale wetgewer. So for the re, for the rest of my time during the democratic dispensation I was serving as a public representative. And uh, you grow, you learn a lot, you get into office and you in your doubt your abilities. You find yourself, you find your niche, you know begin to know yourself and you know what you want out of life and you know also what you can do in terms of where you are being deployed and so on so as soon as you start to understand what it is that you are all about and you you decide that is how I'm going to walk my path and that is what I'm going to do that is how I'm going to be people want when you are in public office they want you to be what they want you to be they want you to be the, what they want to see but i mean i've been someone for the past how many years that said to myself stay true to yourself Play, getrou aan jouself, play, getrou aan jou karakter en moet nie verander omdat mense iemand anders wil sien nie. Natuurlik ek soos ek was ook redelik jong toe ek in die in die politiek kom. Ek dink op hy stadie was ek omtrent 30 jaar of so wat ek nou aan die aan die openbare uh, uh, kantoor begin. So met ons agtergrond het ons geweet wat is ons verwagting van die demokrasie en jy het nog altyd omdat jy weet wat was die rol wat jy gespeel het, het jy nog altyd die verwagting gehad 
Dat die democratie moet rare gaan door de people shall govern. Maar die, the people must be responsible and they must also share our responsibility to make sure that we do things correctly. And dit is, dit is hoe ik mezelf zal definiëren als iemand wat weet waarin ik op pad op die stadium geweet het waarin ik op pad is en geweet het wat, het, ek, wat, het, wat ek in die leven uit wil hee. Maar sommige kere, zoals in mijn geval, gebeur dinge boe jou verwachting. Want ek ben, toe ek in, in public office gaan, you know, we grow up expecting very little. As long as we were comfortable and that is why we, we were not satisfied with the, with the regime. Because it's not what we thought that life would be for us. And that is why we also get involved. We got involved as community activists, as people that were part of, 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 of struggling student politics and so on. It's exactly because you know what you wanted out of life. And that is wh what was going on in the regime was something that, you, that showed us that definitely we are not going to get what we want if this doesn't change. So when it changed, you expected a lot more. But also, in the life of the people, to to pass by what na jou kan to kom. Want soos ek sê, die verwachtinge was baie hoog, alles was natuurlijk nie soos wat ons het geverwacht het. En dis waarom ek vir my gesê, bly getrouw aan jouself. Ek is, a, soos ek sê, ek is a makkelijke mens, maar ek is ook iemand wat die, a vlieg sit nou nie op my neesie. Kom, ek sê soos ons al in Afrikaans sê, a vlieg sit nie op my neesie. Want mense is geneig, as jy in openbare posiesie is, dan wil hulle gewoonlik misbruik maak. Van die, van, die, van die situasie en hulle wil ook per ty keer vir jou uh, gebruik vir dinge wat nie noodwendig deel is van jou beginsel sien. Ek is een beginselvaste persoon, ek is een gelovige persoon, ek is een kerkganger, ek is actief in my kerk, ek is actief in my gemeenskap, ek is een vrygevige persoon, tot die extent dat baie mense ook nogal misbruik kan maak van my. Maar dit is nie vir my issue nie, want baie kere ek, in, in lewe vind jy dat mense dink, ach hierdie ene, is dom, so hy sal net doen wat ek vir hom sê en so aan, maar sommige kere, een mens manipuleer maar een bykie die situasie, waar jy kie voel, ach, kom ons, kom ons doen vir die mense, iets wat ek in hierdie tyd geleer het, is dat is beter om vrygevig te wees, want daar is so baie mense wat rarig net sê die, daar is nog so baie mense wat rarig net sê die, en dit is die rede waarom ek die soort persoon is wat glo, jy moet die oop aan dit, en ek glo nogal aan dit wat sy werk jou brood op die water, en dit sal terug geswem kom na jou toe. Ek, I, I believe in the fact that you must give to receive. You cannot just give, receive and think you can hold it and think it will multiply. Because if you give more love to people, they will definitely give more love to you. So I'm not speaking about even just material things. I'm also speaking about what you are investing in other people. By developing people, by speaking to them, by giving them love, by appreciating them, but also by making sure that people know that you, you never underestimate the, the, the capacity or the capability of someone. That is the kind of people, a person that I am, that's why I'm saying, I can accommodate people. And I am the, I'm, I'm very giving, but I also want people to appreciate them because I'm a very appreciative person also. And that is coming from my religious and Christian background as a staunch Catholic that is Act, uh, that is re really active in my church, that is giving, that is also making sure that we teach our children the right values and things. I'm, I'm just, I'm for that. I'm a person that believes in value-based living, but I also believe in, in giving you receive. I, I hope I've, I've responded to the question that you have asked. No, no, thanks. You've done more than that. Mm. And let me do a mock net, I let the events, I partay. Uh, ek weet, het was uh, opdrangs vir jy en die, met die laaste verkiesingsveld uh, toch, maar jy het goed gedoen en ons hoop jy sal aan hou met die goeie werk wat jy gedoen het. Ons het ook uitgevond dat jy, ek denk, uh, nummer 76 is op die nationale lees, uh, sal die premier, as premier nou in die nationale parlement beland, met die selde geestdruf aangaan en uh, ek denk een persoon wat vir jy sal baie mis in die plaaslike wetgeving is so is meneer Babu Seng. Want jy het baie betleed met mense van die oppositie daar so. En ons moet sê, ons, ons is gewoond, hy die ou bedeel was daar ou mense in parlement wat altyd sit en hulle sier daar. Maar was altyd een plezier vir ons om daar boord te sit en vir jy hulle kyk sien hoe jy hulle betleed en sovoort. Uh, 
Maar zo op Israël niet daar, meer opbouwen in Israël, dat ook naar de nationale uh, parlement of wat. Maar zo ook net voor Ierland nog uh, gelukkig wensen met die eetslaaf wat ons nog uh, gekredit. Maar we gaan niet met dezelfde geest erop aangaan en dezelfde spirit zoals ons moet zeggen. Kom ik begin hier te zeggen bij dankie, want ons het inderdaad een uh, thuisstrijd gevoerd. Die Noordkap is, is gewoonlijk uh, moeilijk om een verkiezingsveld toch te voeren in die zin dat ons, uh, ons het afstaande wat ons moet reis en dan gaan die bijvoorbeeld naar Plexus Royval toe dan is het maar min mensen wat je aantreft so ons, ons, is, ons is te eil bevolk, maar ons het groot afstaande wat ons moet reis en dat is so baie dinge waarin je moet aandag gee en ons het probeer om ons, ons regerings uh, die, die, die delivery van die government te combine met de campaign waarin ons mensen remind om te zeggen dat uh, na elke vijf jaar moet uh, een democratie werken. Dan moet ons na elke vijf jaar ons mandaat hernie. Wat betekent ons komt terug en ons komt om die mandaat te hernie. Ons kan niet maar net aangaan nie, want dit is hier dictatorskap en dit is ook dit is definitief een functionerende democratie. So, dit is die reden waarom ik zei dat was een moeilijke uh, veld toch, wat ons gevoerd het, maar het was ook lekker, dit was aangenaam om terug te kunnen gaan, want in die afgelopen vijf jaar het ons baie hard gewerkt en ons het zeker gemaakt van 2013 af, het ons zeker gemaakt dat ons omtrent elke maand of elke tweede maand een gemeenschap bezoek als die uitvoerende raad van die Noordkap en ons, dit was zo so intensief, uh, die, 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 die werk wat ons gedoen het om zeker te maken dat ons onze mensen dien als een, als een Noordkap regeren voor de afgelopen beetje meer dan vijf jaar. So daarom was het nodig dat ons ons terug gaan, ons het so mense met herinner. En die mensen het natuurlijk uitgekomen, ons is een beetje te leer gesteld met die feit dat ons uitslaan beetje gedaald het, maar nog steeds in die ANC volstrekte meerderheid gekry in die provincie. En een mens waardeer dat ons moet ook sê dankie vir onze mensen wat uitgegaan het om weer eens voor die eindsee in regering en as een partij te bevestig dat hulle nog steeds vertrouwen in ons het. Wat, wat anbeoord, wat with regards to the fact of the, of the heckling en the spirit that we had in our legislature, it's much more easier to do it in a small legislature like ours. The National Assembly, there is about 400 members, so you can imagine, even if we would want to be as lively as we were, you might be drained by all the different voices that are there. So I don't, I don't know whether it will still be the same. But I can say where this is coming from, the heckling and everything, it's not necessarily a fight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, you find that the opposition will bring in things that they have read in the media, not necessarily correct, not factual. And, and then you get with this heckling, you get an opportunity also to throw in the, the correct facts and so on. So, uh, but also when I came into the legislature, I found some few people there. Je was daar samen met ons, je weet, daar was paar mensen wat gewoonlijk gehekkeld en zo. En toen ik nog die niek van die ding kreeg, toen ik nog die niek van die ding kreeg, toen zie ik maar, dat is eigenlijk iets, dat is een goede instrument wat je kan gebruiken om, om zeker te maken, je disorganise. Daar, ik weet dat je opgeleid dat die leer van die oppositie nooit, als hij klaar zit die bij gedoe, dat hij zit die, want hij is bang voor mijn mond. <laughs> maar uh, zoals ik zei, mensen weet je bij die nationale vergadering, if it will be the same, because like I said, you can be drained out because of all the many people that are there and it's, 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 it's big. But I think the, the dynamic interaction, that one I'm looking forward to, because I think also sometimes people are, are but very courteous. In the, in the National Assembly, of which at least we could test, uh, we could test the speaker in the, the whole setup here, we could test it, we could go to the extent where the speaker was just about to put us out of the house, <laughs> of which you don't know whether you will be able to do it in the National Assembly. We will be totally new there, but not totally new as members, but we will then have to observe what we can and how far we can actually go. So that is what I, I hope for a fact that the uh, Alessal is because the stuff is there with the national government. I think it's a little too late. I think it's what the rim on our bias is in the province, so it's over. So it's a question of honor. So it's a good thing. But most of the time, when people 
blij meer bij de regering zo so, so handen en de voeten zet. En 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 ik denk de ouders het ook een rol om te spelen. Wat de advies gaan premier voor die nieuwe uitvoerende raad geven en ik uh, denk meer specifiek die inkomende premier en die onderwijs, uh, die LER van onderwijs. Wat denk je moet ons verschillen doen om te verzekeren dat onze uitslag uh, een beetje Kom, kom, ik, kom, ik, kom ik maak iets wat, wat mensen gevoel het ons is misschien op die verdediging. In teendeel, kom ik, kom ik maak een klein beetje van een raar stijlen. Uh, voor, die, voor die tweede keer nou, als John Tala had ze weer deel van die, van die met, is het, of hoeveel jaar is dit om te red, maar ons het begin met John Tala had ze weer, wat was in die begin op 20% was hulle sy uitslag. Vandaag is John Tala had ze weer een van die best performing, let me put it like that, best performing districts in terms of education, I think they did more than 60%. And they they were one of the of the districts that had 100% pass rates in some of the schools and so on. So we started on a very low level. But what is happening now is that you see a lower percentage, possibly because other provinces are getting a higher percentage. But what we have seen through the briefings that were given to us and the information that we had access to is that we had a better quality pass rate of our matrix last year. Although the overall percentage was lower, we had more bachelor passes. We had more, uh, sc less schools that were below 30%, I can say that. But we ge generally, we had a qualitative matric result more than a quantitative one. And that was actually what we were looking at. We were also saying, oh, but this is a disappointment that we have now have this uh, that we are at a lower rate, but when we got the briefing, but also the issue of of of, of this one that are getting a second chance, mm -hmm. that learners, we could also see that there was a major, a vast improvement. But uh, if you look, for instance, at the district like ZFM, they had about 60% of all the re the repeaters. I don't, I just forgot what they call them now, but the ones that are being allowed to 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 repeat the 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 metric or oh, the progress, progress they call in the progress learners mm -hmm. of the progress learners they had about sixty percent they had a very good uh, rate with regards there too. So what we can advise to the incoming administration is that we must give more attention to the progress learners to make sure that more children get metric and I think for us to focus on being number one, number two, or number three, and not getting the qualitative result, that is something that we should not should not be our focus. We can even be number nine in the country as long as we see the kind of qualitative passes that we have seen in terms of more bachelor passes, more children that pass to go and study at a college and all of that. So that is the kind of thing that you want to see because one of the areas in terms of education in the Northern Cape Province is that four years ago we had a serious problem of capacity and skills and we started as the Premier's office specifically to go beyond the Premier's Bursary Trust Fund to involve the private sector like your mines, like the IPPs and all of them to make sure that more children get access to finances to go and study further. Today we can proudly say, if at all this year we get the assistance from the Mine Managers Forum Secretary that we are working with, the Trust, it will go up, go up to almost 5.5 million, if I'm correct. And, uh, and also the IPPs, they assisted us with almost more than 300 uh, bursaries. And these children are getting bursaries for the three or four year study that they are following, which means we will have a broader base of of qualified and educated uh, or graduated people that will come out of colleges, out of university. If you look at Salt Plaque University, I mean Salt Plaque started with something like 105 uh, uh, students. Yeah. And in the sixth year, we are almost at 2,000 now as we speak. So what I'm saying is that education was always an apex priority in this province. And we are getting the necessary results. 
the only thing that is in comparison with other provinces, we will have to attend to that fact to see how we are going to improve in making sure that more of our children, because that is what this percentage are saying, that more of our children pass. And the issue is the progress learners should get more attention so that more of them can contribute to the overall pass rate. No, I said, Premier, thanks for that, because you will know your party is under a lot of criticism over mm -hmm. the pass rate, and that the pass rate has been lowered. But you've touched on a very important issue now, which is the issue of the quality of quality education. Of I think uh, we rarely, really venture into that specific mm -hmm. issue when it comes to looking at or how we look at or how we perceive the outcome of these uh, metric results. And that leads us to another issue, jobs in the province. What would you say you have done during your reign to ensure that uh, we create more jobs? And uh, we often say that government cannot do it alone. Uh, what partnerships have you formed with the private sector that you would also encourage a new incumbent to follow up on? First of all, let me start by saying uh, I've just this morning seen that in terms of the absorption rate, the Northern Cape is doing better than many other provinces in terms of the labor absorption rate. But also, the last quarter, quarterly survey of states as they showed that the Northern Cape, in fact, the, the, the unemployment rate went down, it will have decreased, and we are currently one of the provinces with a lower, lower than the national average. Uh, unemployment rate. That is something that, that, uh, that uh, the last quarterly survey of 2018 mm -hmm. have shown to, to, to us as a, as a Northern Cape province. But uh, further to that, we started to, to have a robust engagement with particularly the mining sector, the, 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 the IPP sector, that is now the renewable energy sector, we started also to have engagements, not at the same robust level as we had with what we see as the mining, that is, that is, that is actually one of the, the backbone of the economy of this province, and then also uh, agriculture. But I think we can do more in terms of agriculture because agriculture is also one of the sectors where we have a very high rate of intake or labor absorption it's just that I don't think we appreciate it enough. And then also, in terms of tourism development, that is some of the areas where we really gave a lot of attention to. But there is another area that is very important that I think possibly we are not doing enough. And that is also where our engagement came with the mine bosses and also with, uh, with, the, with the renewable energy sector, but also generally that we were looking into the issue of entrepreneurship development and also of local procurement. Because if, if procurement can be done locally, our small businesses can develop. Mm -hmm. And so in many areas, in, in, for instance in India, I've seen that the small businesses is the backbone of the economy. So we have actually really uh, engaged and tried to, to see how we can, can, can be assisted to, for entrepreneurship development from the side of the mines, from the side of our private sector partners. The same role that they've been playing to assist us with education, we wanted the same role that they should play in terms of making sure that local procurement will enable us to build our local businesses. And I must say, in John Tower Heights area particularly, there is a very robust uh, kind of, 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 of movement beginning to, to develop, to evolve, that is, uh, that is trying to build entrepreneurship and also to make sure that the mines procure from there not only uh, consumables but also services mm -hmm. so that we can see that how we can actually make sure that we build that. You know the Northern Cape generally is, is, is science and technology is also a kind of a hub that is beginning to develop mm -hmm. but I don't think enough is happening in terms of job creation and so on if you speak about the SKA also about the IPPs because you will find that in the in the in the construction phase you will find that for instance one solar plant can can have an intake of 1,500 people mm -hmm. and eventually they will only have 500 between 200 and 500 people 
for the duration of almost 20 years of that specific plan. And that is the kind of, 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 of areas where we engage them and see how can we then make sure that there is a benefit that is lasting for the people of the province. But also, if you remember just recently, we opened Hamsberg mine. Now, Hamsberg was something that when we got into 2009, when we got into government, we found that it is something that was actually looming, mm -hmm. but it was just not happening. So I became the MEC of Environment in most of the areas that actually uh, hampered the development of that specific mine was around the flora and the fauna. That was the issues that hampered them. And so we started to run with them and make sure that we engage national so that that kind of issues, the replacement and whatever they were supposed to be doing, because they bought some farms where they, what they, that they can use to make sure that the same plants and things that they take out of Hansberg will be now uh, planted there and they will be developed there so that they should not be in terms of the ecolog ecology, there should not be a kind of a, of a, of a, of a what you call in Afrikaans, it's say first year, but yeah. there should not be a kind of a, of something that is changed in terms of that. Because it's very important that the, the ecology, the system should be retained and maintained, and that was one of the things. And it, it, it took a little bit of time, but we made sure that we ran with them and we helped them to, to actually uh, uh, overcome that kind of obstacles. And that now, when they started with the development, that mine, the whole construction and development of that mine, together with a $30 million water uh, pipeline development in Pella from, from the Orange River through Pella, together with the electri electricity development, that whole development took less, less than a year for them to do and what was what was really uh, wonderful about the whole development is that all the steel they could get it from a factory in South Africa in time and within budget. So that is how we could also influence some of the processes and assist them. And today this very same Hamsberg after the mine is open, they are going to develop more than one billion further to to make sure that they, they start a a plant for for the for the downstream beneficiation but also a fertilizer plant which is apparently something that is also one of the spin offs of, 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 of the mining of of the zinc mining. And just the day before yesterday I had a discussion with the CEO of Zinc International and they are still uh, on par and on track with the very same development. That assisted us a lot with making sure that there is job creation in the Namakwa region mm -hmm. and there will be more job creation with regards to the kind of development that is still coming. So there are different uh, uh, kind of, of initiatives that we as the government supported the private sector because like you say, government is not necessarily a creator of jobs. and. Already, if you listen to the Minister of Finance, he will say that we've got uh, such a high bill of the public sector bill is too high. So that is how development or assistance to the private sector can assist us. Remember Kumba Iron Ore had to retrench so many people, but we've engaged them constantly. We've engaged them constantly. And when the, the commodity prices started to surge again, immediately they took most of the people back they, they have retrenched. I mean, up till now, they gave me the figure when we were with them in Kuruman, but I'm just... And also Kumba Iron Ore, we are together with them, busy in seeing how we can make sure that these resources that are available for social labor, labor projects are being utilized beneficially for the province. And that is one of the projects that we are leaving as a legacy for our, uh, 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 this, the ones that will now be the incoming uh, six administration, that's what I want to say, for them to follow up and to work in internet with Kumba I know, because we sat down and we said, and they told us, but all the mines in John Tala Heights, and ZFM, we have spent more than one billion rand 
in this province on social labor projects. And I said, yes, indeed, that show me where. Yeah. And they started to say, yeah, but we built a road there, and we did some water pipeline there, and, and so and so I said to them, you see, the problem is that there is no coordination. And if you don't coordinate what you are doing, you will have a problem. The other thing that you raised, Premier, is on the issue of entrepreneurship. I think from our experience, people in the Northern Cape don't seem to rise to the occasion and take these opportunities that you create as government. And I think the IPP example is a classical one where you have not really, you don't get the sense that a lot of entrepreneurs in the province get involved in these processes where these projects are. Uh, and the Zinc project is also a case in point where if you look at the BE structure, it's also houting heavy and a few people from the province, you know, take up these opportunities. Uh, as government, what are you doing to encourage, I know it's difficult if people are not entrepreneurs by nature for you to make them entrepreneurs, but uh, what, what would you encourage government to do in ensuring that most of the people benefit from the resources that we do have in abundance. Uh, but also to thank you for the Hamsburg. It has been a pain. In fact, in, the, in 1995, 96, when we were together there, it was a problem. And I think at the time they were talking of blue cranes. I was MEC for environmental affairs. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what a blue crane was. <laughs> but I was told that there were birds that would be affected if the mine mm -hmm. was to start. But I must say, we must congratulate you in mm -hmm. ensuring that the project really get off the ground and the spin-offs are there. So I've got three questions. The issue of the entrepreneurs in the province not taking up the opportunities. And I think the issue of the, I'm not sure what the decision is on the smelter. Because previously, there was a plan to have a smelter in Namibia for the zinc. Uh, is that still continuing, or have you convinced or persuaded them otherwise? Uh, we will come back to the third issue because uh, it, it, it sort of impacts on the issue of agriculture and land. Because you know, land has been a very topical mm. issue from all parties that we interviewed. Land was the issue of land was very high on the agenda, and I agree. Agriculture is one sector that can absorb quite a number of jobs, and. The fact that we have a small population is not necessarily a bad thing. It actually means you can create as many jobs as possible and even have a 100% employment rate. But, but can Premier please clarify to us with the Hamswick issue, what is the situation with the smelter? Is it going to be held? I think, are they going to have one in Namibia or will they have one in South Africa, in the Northern Cape more specifically? Yeah, I, I remember that. In initially, they would have taken the ore to Roshpina, that is in the south of Namibia. But with the kind of, uh, I think a little bit of persuasion, but I also think it was the assistance that we've been giving to them. And I we've introduced them to the president for, and today they are one of the, of the major players in the investment, uh, the president's investment drive and so on. They, and their new, uh, uh, is it the boss? I don't know what I should say, what he is. That, uh, but that, that guy is from India. He's actually very positive. The chairperson of their board mm -hmm. is very positive about South Africa. And one of the reasons I think also that they have decided to then extend the development locally. It will, all, it will assist them in terms of the fact that they don't have to have a major cost with regards to transporting, but also the possibility of the Bukhobay yes. uh, Baba is, is, is actually something that is looming big for large for them because that will assist them in not having to have to export very far. Oh, yeah. And that is the reason why they have decided to, 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 to have the smelter locally, but also the fertilizer plant. Yeah. That is also something that is particularly something that will create some very few jobs. So currently, the agreement is that they will have both the smelter at Achanais, as well as the fertilizer plant, because 
it is actually leaning itself, the whole area is leaning itself to that kind of development, but also the fact in terms of the offset agreement. They have now bought some fuel farms and given it to the to the government in exchange for other land that will make their their development to be a development that will just be in one area. So that is that is why currently as we speak and even as oh, as as recent as two days ago when we spoke to the to the CEO, they are convinced that they want to, to do the development further. Just they particularly also I think in terms of the the investment in infrastructure that they have done in 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 the in that specific development. Prima, and as part of your legacy, we are aware that government has been undertaking a lot of overseas missions. You've now spoken about the Hamsburg project at length and the relationships you've had with Namibia as an ambassador for the province. What would you say the relationship has meant in the broader sense of the African diaspora and making sure that as we accept that we are one Africa, we are just uh, separated by these boundaries, these borders. We know you've been spending a lot of time with your Namibian counterparts. Can you please share with us what the objective of those engagements was and whether you are satisfied uh, we are moving in the right direction as far as that is concerned? Now, if you look at the at the tuning agreement that you are having with the Karas region, there are <coughs> particularly streams that we have attended to now. I think the background of this agreement was that it was apparently signed very early in the new, uh, I think about 2003, in the democracy. But it was very dormant up until we now, I think it's 2015, we now started and we've been reminded by the by our counterparts in Namibia that there was such an, an agreement that was existing and that was not necessarily having the necessary spin-offs for both of us, for them as the Karas region and then for us as, as, as the, the Northern Cape. <coughs> so in terms of the social stream, we are really doing very fine, very well. There is now education, sports and also other uh, culture and, tra and, so, and so, tradition and so on. We are doing very well and we are moving. It's also through that agreement that we do now have the, the Nama language that we brought back to two schools in the province, that is in Kubus in the Rathersfield and Rim Fasma mm -hmm. here in, in ZFM. We have started last year with the with the Nama language project, and now we are having an agreement with the with University of Namibia for a three-year diploma course for, for for people that want to be trained in teaching the Nama language, and they are prepared. We are also still engaging the Tivet College in Abington, Abington College. They are prepared to send lecturers, of which we must just share the 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 expenses. They are prepared to to send lecturers for certain block times and then from there people will be doing assignments and so on. So it is it is actually confirmed we are going to sign that off very soon, which means that we will be able to for people that are interested in the Nama language, we will be able to give them that that, that uh, training in that in that specific field. And then the second one is the economic stream. In terms of the economic stream, we still think that more can happen. We want that agreement between Luderitz, a local municipality, and, and the Rechtersveld local municipality. Because they have got similar, uh, similar kind of, 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 of areas where they can cooperate. For instance, the marine, and the marine and fisheries, and also the fact that Luderitz has got a small harbor, but it's it's very nicely developed, which means if we if we look at the small harbors, we can then have that kind of of, of similar development. Besides the Bukhubay, that will be a deep seaport. 
So, uh, and also in terms of local government, there is many things that is happening. There is agreements now between the David Kreper municipality and the Kirtman's Hope municipality. So the, the, the tuning agreement is working for us. And there is still the potential of renewable energy that we can have because we've got a similar climate and the similar conditions. Wind energy, for instance, in the Luderitz area will work and also the solar energy in an area like Karasberg, Ketman's work that area. So there is still great potential. But I must say that we, have, uh, we had a meeting with our High Commissioner in, in Namibia, a very contentious and, 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 and practical person. And in terms of what they have actually advised us with regards to issues of agriculture, particularly since we are sharing the Orange River, there is a big potential. And that is some of the areas that we would want to, the, the sixth administration to actually venture further in taking the private sector from the side of, of, of South Africa to assist. And because in Namibia, it's particularly our emerging farmers that need more development. And that, that can, particularly agriculture, can be a, a, a game changer in the whole of the, of the tuning agreement. So that is something that we want to recommend that should be explored further in terms of our of our tuning agreement. Yeah, yeah no thanks for that. Because the Luderitz, Haba, Buchuberg, the SEZ, and the fact that Appington has the longest runway, runway in the mm -hmm. Southern Hemisphere lends themselves very well to a development corridor. A very big, and, and if you, if, if, it is lending itself to a, to, a, to a development corridor, which means we can expand mm -hmm. the whole uh, SEZ concept mm -hmm. to become a corridor mm -hmm. around the West Coast, including Namibia. Remember Roshpina already there is that uh, mining development in the Roshpina area. In Luderitz, they've got a, uh, the fisheries is, is well developed, mm -hmm. of which it can also assist our uh, fisheries in in areas like Gondekla Bay yeah. and Port Nalo yeah. in the Richtersveld, particularly if you find that the Buho Bay development, there are currently other uh, uh, players that want to come in, that want to also be part of the Buho Bay development, private sector players, someone that is actually mining, is it heavy metals, yeah. all the heavy metals, they want to to become part and parcel of it, which means we've got enough interest for the Boho Bay development, and then you include the development around Hamsberg and up to and including uh, the, the SEZ development in Uppington. Mm -hmm. And also, if you look at the, at the solar corridor, mm -hmm. that could even up to and including the R, well, where we spoke about the 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 harbor um, the, the, the inland harbor let me say the dry port the in, inland harbor the dry port so that corridor can the potential that it's having from the for the northern cape I've I've just this morning thought about it I said almost all the small projects that were there you name it mental hospital rehabilitation center the hospitals that has been built and everything in this term we have actually finalized almost everything which means it is giving us now an opportunity to fully focus on the economic development to make sure that it's not only for job creation but also for wealth creation to make sure that this entrepreneurs that we are speaking about that we are giving them more and broader opportunities and there is a partnership that all of us that have got interest will have to get together because already the government is is willing and able. The, the uh, development of SEZ is already for Hamsberg. We've got this uh, uh, cordial relationship with that development. Bokhobay is our concept, but we are giving it out to the private sector for investment and development, which means with that PPP that I'm speaking about, we can have a prosperous Northern Cape. We've got road 
infrastructure that is very good. We've got mostly electricity infrastructure and water infrastructure that is very good, but also with the investment from the site of the mines and other social role players, we will have uh, ample infrastructure to make sure that that kind of development will then respond to our quest for skills development and for job creation. So, Premier, in your view, would you say you leave a very good legacy behind? Because from what I hear you saying is the the seed has been planted. It's definitely and all that needs to happen is for to be the problems to cultivate and take it to the next level. In your own words, would you say you are leaving a good legacy behind, and you have really made a meaningful contribution to the development of the Northern Cape during your term? I think other people will judge me in terms of what is the legacy that I'm leaving behind. Mm -hmm. But I must say, we have done our best. And in terms of when you reflect, you can see that the, the sixth admin, uh, administration just have to continue on the path and what we have built there. I must say that um, many people are telling us that we've been doing very well. And they feel that they hope that the Northern Cape will just move on this trajectory that we have set there. So we are thankful for the opportunity that we could have been there at the, because it depends also at, at which time uh, you are there. And the time that we were there, it actually gave us an opportunity to make sure that we, we lay a solid foundation. And for those that will be incoming, we will just request that build on that foundation. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Things have been done, a foundation has been laid. You've got good relationships with countries like, for instance, mm, China. We've got that relationship with Namibia. We also have relationships that can we just reactivated with the Swiss people, particularly in part of education. And then that is the kind of things that we see. The Spanish people, we know they have made a big, major contribution. And also in terms of, of, of hunting and things that is now on the back burner that need to be reactivated. Hunting and tourism with the Spanish people and so on. We've been, uh, we've been when I was at in environment, We've been having this engagement with international hunting, going to Las Vegas, attending to Washington, attending. That is the kind of things that we need to, 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 to reactivate, that we need to reflect on again. And that is the kind of, of, of potential that is existing, that this incoming administration can build on. Mm. No, thanks, Premier. Before we wrap up, there is the land question. As I've said, uh, all the people we've interviewed were very emotive about this uh, topic. What would you say needs to be done differently? We, we've argued again that a lot of land has been redistributed and restituted in the province. But the challenge seems to be what we do with the land after it has after been redistributed. And I think Rimfas Mark, unfortunately, is the first restitution project that President Mandela himself handed over. Uh, but we also know that we've had a lot of infighting within the communities. The EFF is, for instance, advocating for a plan where the land belongs to the state and they assist the people to develop because they say this infighting creates a lot of problems where people have to develop, they start fighting. Uh, uh, w what would you say needs to be done to ensure that we those communities, because it's theirs and their own water rights as well in most of the instances. Uh, what, what would you encourage uh, an incoming MEC for uh, agriculture, for instance, to do differently to ensure that we pick up on the momentum that, as you have said, the mining sector through your interventions has already shown. Uh, and I agree with you, if we can turn around the agriculture situation, we will create a lot of job. In fact, we, have, we may have to import some some labor. But uh, just uh, lastly, from your side, on the agriculture side, uh, uh, the land issue. What what would you say we need to do differently? Let me let me go back a few 
Yes. I think the Northern Cape was the first province that did the proper land audit done. And I think we are the one province that know exactly how much land is in the hands of private, how much land is in the is in, is communal, and how much land is in the hands of the of the government. And I think we've got the stats. And I and I agree with those that said government must first start to give the land that are in their possession to people that are interested in tilling the land. That is that is one thing that I agree with fully. Secondly, we've got this restitution cases. It is, I mean, it is one of the things that we decided at one stage we are just going to take our hands off because we had settings in our offices. We had fights. Mm -hmm. People, I don't know whether even Bronwyn them remember how people came, came with settings in our offices mm -hmm. from Smudge Drift area. This group is not agreeing with this group, Richtersfeld, yeah. up until today the most expensive restitution case. I am calling it expensive, but those people are supposed to be millionaires, multi-millionaires, but because of the human factor, they don't agree with one another. So there is there is nothing forthcoming. Today with Zama Zama Sinamakwa, where people are now being arrested and shot on their own land, in mostly their own land, because of the fact that CPAs and others cannot just agree. Smudged off. Parklands, you name them, and Rimfasmark. Rimfasmark, at least there is a bit of stability now. But the new trust, we hope this new trust that is there now, because they they are actually now pushing this thing. That this development, remember, there was an agreement for the citrus that was there and whatever. They are pushing now that that kind of agreement should be resuscitated, so that they can start to have that agriculture at least with Rimfasmark. I feel, I feel that I'm going out knowing that at least they are now beginning to walk uh, uh, walk the talk. I don't know about backlands because I also had an engagement. You see, the problem is that if our people are not going to use these opportunities, those that we got the land from, they see the they they are just taking it back because you know there's empowerment schemes. The only one that really could work was the one of Karsten. Yeah. But people decided, no, they want the money and they want out. It is the very same people that are saying, we don't have land. Mm -hmm. But we, the, the government have, in, have invested in this empowerment schemes on their behalf, and then afterwards they withdrew the money. My view is that let us leave the emotions out of land and let the people who are the owners of the land begin to see the land as a business proposition so that they can work and they can create wealth for themselves with the land that is belonging to them. Government has a responsibility to make sure that we avail land to others that are interested in having the land. So if we can make sure that people that are interested are having the land, but also that we have a solid project of a program that will assist those that are the owners of the land to be able to use or to capitalize on that land then this will be assisting. And I must say, that is in place. When we had a discussion as the ANC about the, 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 the issue of land last year, we had a, a summit where we were discussing the issue of land. And land affairs, actually, when they told us what they are having in place, it is really a matter of how do you implement it. It is really a matter of how do you implement it. And in that very same, meeting where we were in that engagement there were people that were successfully you know there was one project that this person told me and i thought that thing can work possibly for in fasma where they bring commercial farmers in and make them 49 percent uh, partners they do all the work they use the land and they do everything and the because the community is a 51% shareholder, they get all the spoils. And with the 49%, it is what is being used to, to redistribute within the development of the land. All, everyone is benefiting. That specific project is, 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 is prosperous to the extent that the community have actually 
and now we're having a, 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 a side business where they are renting out helicopters because of the success of the success story of them using the skill of the commercial, commercial farmer with their land mm. and their investment and today they can be one of the kind of, of, of development that can be replicated in some of the areas mm. and then our people will be able to benefit. Look at parklands, mm. diamond rich area. You can imagine if our people can just work together. Prosperity and welfare will start there. They will become wealthy. So my point is that our people must change their attitude firstly. And they must see land as a prospective uh, enrichment tool. And also as something that will create jobs and wealth for themselves. Firstly, before they just want land to say, we have got land. And there is really, like I said, there is good practices that they can put in place that will assist our people. So the land story will, will actually become something else, something different. You've told me you are going to meet Mukai Tobi. Speak to him. He's got a wealth of knowledge around the whole issue, particularly the, the legal issues around the, the issue of land. No, thanks, Premier, and uh, it was really an honor Thank having you. you with us today. We wish you all of the best in your future endeavors. And please, wherever you are, remember us in our small little dorpy here. Uh, but we know you'll be advocating for us uh, in the and national assembly. And we advocating for our pinter. For our pinter. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. I mean, there is one thing about us from the Northern Cape that I hope people feel like myself. I think we are the best hidden secrets in this country because the potential of this province is enormous. It's just that we must begin to put our heads together and develop what we have, the potential that we have in our heads. Now we'll use that one, the best hidden secret. It it's the best be hidden capsule. secret, really. Yeah. And Sometimes when we meet people overseas, when we're going out in outbound mission, where we meet people overseas and we, we show them what we are having and so on. But we are coming, we are hunting in Northwest, we are hunting in Pumalanga, in, but very few of them know about the Northern King. And then some of them will say, particularly the Americans, they come to Winterhook and so on. And when we start to, to, to market our province, they will then also add and say, yes, we are going to Vantashuk, and it's indeed true, it's a beautiful, the roads are very good, and all of their things. Mm. Because we, we are really the best kept secret of this, mm. of this country, mm. because of what we have. And this province has got everything. If you look at the technology, if you look at the, the salt, that is just the South African Large Telescope in Sutherland. Mm. If you look at SKA, if you look at the the renewable energy that can become a a tourism potential tourism technology technology tourism from uh, if you look at it from another level. But we've got all the minerals, almost all the minerals that you can just think about. So the and we've got water, we've got land, arable land for that matter. We've got the sea, we've got potential of marine. So the problem is that there is enough for everyone. The issue is just where do we start to make sure that we develop everything. Thank you viewers for joining us in yet another entertaining show with our outgoing Premier, uh, Comrade Sylvia Lucas. We wish her the best in her future endeavors. And please stay tuned for another interview with the incoming Premier of the Northern Cape Legislature, Dr. Zamani Song.